Amen, hallelujah. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Can we all stand up and stretch our hands toward the heavens and believe that God is in control? Hallelujah. I request for this year. We believe that God will respond to our prayers. So let's close our eyes and put everything in God's hands this morning. Hallelujah. Lord. There is absolutely nothing that is in this basket, Lord, that you did not die for. Cancer, you died for. Autism, you died for. Divorce, you died for. All kind of sickness in our bodies, you died for. Job issues, you died for. The husband who left the mother with the kids, you died for. The mothers who are unfaithful to the husband, you died for. Hallelujah. There is absolutely nothing in this basket that you did not die for. Oh, hallelujah. You gave your life for what is in this basket. Lord, on the third day, you resurrected. But you defeated autism, you defeated headaches, chronic headaches, you defeated all kinds of issues that we have, all of them one by one by one, you defeated them, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. The word says, bring all your issues at the cross. Hallelujah. There is no other place we can go. There is no other thing we can do, Lord. It's to bring all the requests to you. You have defeated them. We want one word, Lord. One word, and it will be victory. One word, and autism will be defeated, eradicated from our church. Cancer will be defeated, eradicated from our church and our community and all the parents and the people we know, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray for a healthy community, healthy church, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Some of your children, Lord, are here and are suffering. Their requests are here. Lord, I pray that you extend your, uh, your hand to us, Lord, and you respond to these prayers, Lord. We want just to hear one word. Because one word from you will revive even the dead, Lord. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Let the power of resurrection act and act now yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let your kids cry out victoriously. Yes. Hallelujah. Victoriously, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I declare victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. Oh, healing is coming on our way. Hallelujah. Healing is coming in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we glorify your name and we say Amen. Oh, we say Hallelujah. We say glory to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. After the fellowship, after the, the service, we'll have fellowship in the foyer. So don't be in a hurry to go home. Stay around. Hallelujah. Connect with friends and relatives. Amen. Amen. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this week is crucial for us Christians. Last Sunday, if we go back in the history, Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. Hallelujah. And people were around, clapping their hands, welcoming the king. Hallelujah. This was a fulfillment of a prophecy about 
the coming of the Messiah. And it is for that reason that he was killed. Because all the people that were in power, they saw in one second that the power meant nothing. And then they had no other choice than to kill him. Amen. So on Friday that week, that's the day he was crucified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I like having the impression I'm connecting. Am I connecting this morning? Am I connecting? Today is a resurrection day. Amen. So many people throughout the Bible will be shocked that actually the resurrection happened. That person they wanted to kill, crying, thinking that they will finish him, actually he was going to resurrect. Hallelujah. I wonder what Herod will think about the resurrection today. After signing off, saying, okay, go ahead and do whatever you want to do with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, come on. You as well, you have enemies. You as well, you have people who did not think you will grow up to become a mature woman, a mature man of God. You have enemies too. People who did not think that you will be able to have kids. They looked at you, they looked after the family, they roared you off, thinking you will be nothing. Brothers and sisters, you are victorious because you are here. Amen. You may be sick, but it's just for a period that will go away. Hallelujah. Amen. With this resurrection and with the power of resurrection, tap into that. Proclaim victory for yourself. Even for something that has have happened yet. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I was saying, the enemies of the gospel could not stop the resurrection. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Where are they today? Where are those enemies today? Where are your enemies today? Where are the people who mocked you or mocked your family thinking you will be nothing? Where are they today? Hallelujah. Yeah. Some of you, I know, you grew up in a tough situation. Very tough. But look at yourself today. You are still up and running. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans and the Jews wanted to kill Jesus. Where are they today? All the leaders who crucified them, who crucified Jesus. Where are they today? You read the Bible from the beginning to the end. Where is Baal and all the, his prophets? Where are they today? The Jezebel. Where is Jezebel today? The Moabites and the serpent. Where is the serpent today? The Pharisees. Where are they today? Now let me tell you. They are locked in. They are all locked in in the place waiting for the judgment day. The final judgment. Powerless all of them. I declare this morning that your enemies will be locked in somewhere. Powerless. 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 The condition you have today will be powerless. I declare that in the name of Jesus. Powerless. Where is Jesus? He is not at the cross as a delinquent person. He is not. Jesus is alive. This is the reason we are here today. He is alive in our church. He is alive in our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. What matters for me today is not Jezebel. It's not all these people. What matters for me today is you. What matters for God today is you. And my role here is to warn you that the devil knows everything that I know about you and about the Bible. Hallelujah. He always gives you the impression that you are weak, that you are not loved, that you are poor. And that's the reason you cannot enjoy what has been accomplished at the cross. And that's the reason this basket has full of requests. Because you are unable to enjoy what Jesus died for. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says we are sitting in the heavenly places with Jesus. Amen. 
This means for me and for you, we are now weak. Oh, we are not weak. Actually, we are powerful. We are powerful. This is what the Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 18. I say to you truly, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and the whatever is loosened on earth will be as well loosened in heaven. So it is time to be, to be aware of your power. You carry power. Oh, let me say, you are unstoppable. You are dangerous. I feel sorry for your enemies. Because the day you take conscience of the power in you, the day you stand against them, they are in big trouble. The Bible says, whatsoever that you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Hallelujah. You are dangerous. Hallelujah. Do not feel weak. You are not weak. You are strong and you are unstoppable. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you do not understand the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross of Calvary, if you do not understand, if you do not believe even in the resurrection like some of the people did not, you do not understand or believe that the resurrection gave us an eternal life. Let me tell you, and I'm sorry to say this, you are dead. You are just dead and awaiting to be buried. You are like just a corpse. You are walking. You are working. You go to work. You eat. You laugh. You do everything. It's just a matter of time until you go six feet under. Hallelujah. Because for you, Jesus was dead and was buried and that's it. But for us, for us who believe, for us who are here, for us who are celebrating today, Amen. Jesus went down there to fight. Amen. I can picture this angel saying, no, 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 we got to go there. The, the mass have been upset. Looking at the fight, saying, okay, we, we need to go there, get him out. And then I can picture God saying, no, 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 cool down. This is not for you. You are not powerful enough. This is between my son and myself. You do not know what is going on here. All of this is because of the love that I have for you. The love that I have for you and for you and for you. Jesus went down there for the love that he has for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who hear the message of Jesus and make a choice to ignore it, they are like dead people just waiting to be buried because there is no life in them. But let me say this morning, there is life in you if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The Bible says there is life and life abundantly. Do not look at your condition right now. There is life in you. There is eternal life in you. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, you will not make it to heaven by your works. The book of John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So there is no other way possible. Hallelujah. There is no room for interpretation here. The Bible says, no one comes to the Father except through me. So being nice will not save you. Thank God you're nice. But that will not save you. Helping the poor. I know so many people are nice. When they get to a red light, they take money they give out. Hallelujah. Because in their mind, I'm doing something nice. I'm a nice person. Hallelujah. That will not save you. You may be rich. You have cars. You have kids. You have businesses. You have everything you need. Children. This does not count. Absolutely nothing. 
You might be very smart, a doctor, an engineer, an accountant, or everything you can imagine. That will not save you either. Spiritually, you are dead. I'm sorry, but that's true. You do not know the truth. You have not found a way. Therefore, there is no life in you. Because Jesus is not in you. And Jesus says, I am the truth. Yes. I am the way. Yes. I am life. Hallelujah. So regardless of who you think you are, and what you have already accomplished, if you do not know the truth, if you have not found the way yet, there is no life in you. Hallelujah. Amen. But for us here, there is no, absolutely no doubt at all. Jesus is risen. Amen. Oh, the sacrifice of the cross means for us, our sins are forgiven. Amen. We are redeemed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We will now go to hell. Amen. Oh, <laughs> thank you, brother. I will not go to hell. Yes. Amen. I will not. I don't know about you, but me, I will not go to hell. Yes. If you are here and you are in doubt, you don't know if... You, you don't know, right? Let me say, it's not too late, okay, to make a decision to follow Jesus. Yes. But I have to say, be in hurry. The book of John chapter 4 verse 14 says, You don't even know what your life tomorrow will be. You are like a puff of smoke, a vapor, which appears for a moment and then disappears. This means by the time the service is over, if you leave this door, five minutes after, you could be dead. Done. Finished. Done. So sometimes you have to understand and to make a decision. Just make a decision and let God, God guide you. Amen. Because if you get hell here, you will go to hell there. Okay. If you get hell here, you will get hell eternally. Hallelujah. You cannot change that. If you die, it's over. Whatever you did not do when you were here, it's over. You, it's over. Amen. Let's come back to Jesus. Amen. Why did Jesus die? And how those who were here on Friday, uh, we spoke about that. We spoke about the, all the sacrifice, the Passover. We spoke about all of that. What they call now Yom Kippur or whatever it is. We say that once a year, the high priest will go offer a sacrifice for the entire population. The only the high priest was allowed to go in the Holy of Holies, where the presence of God dwelt. Once a year, it was an instruction. You have to do that once a year so that your sins will be forgiven for that year. And after one year, it has expired. You have to do that again one more time. Hallelujah. So once a year, the high priest will go in there with all the problems, with all the requests, all the issues, all the sickness, all the sins to ask for forgiveness. So nobody else was supposed to go in the Holy of Holies. And the high priest has to prepare himself very well. So before going into the presence of God, a precaution was necessary. Just in case she does not come back. Remember what I told you? There was a rope around his waist to pull him out if he does not come back. Because if there was something wrong with him, even a very small stain in his life, he will be struck right there. But at a place where other people were not allowed to go. So people, after a certain time, if they do not see him coming back, 
they will pull the, the guy who is already dead. Amen. 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 He will die right there on the spot because God does not like, did not like that kind of thing in his presence. There was a veil that was preventing people to enter in the presence of God. That veil was is like a curtain, very thick, very high, 60 feet and even more high, and at least four inches thick. It's not a paper that you can just shred. Impossible. Hallelujah. And all the people from Israel were there assisting to the ceremony and waiting for the guy to come out just to, make, to be sure, oh, okay, we have one more year to go. Our sins were forgiven. Jesus. Hallelujah. And the high priest will sacrifice an animal and then we'll take the blood and we'll spread in the Holy of Holies. If the, the blood is accepted, and then that's the sign that he can come back. And then when he comes back, he takes a goat, he lays his hand on the goat, he transfers all the sins, all the problems on the goat, he designates a guy to take the goat and to bring the goat into the wilderness. And the goat will be released into the wilderness with all the people's sins. Hallelujah! Amen. But that was the old way of doing things. On the other side, we have Jesus, who is our high priest. Hallelujah. Our high priest. Yes. Amen. And also our lamb that was sacrificed for us. Amen. He went to hell for three days. Hallelujah. Three days of spiritual battle, spiritual fight. Even Jackie Chan could not do that. Impossible. And after three days, he came back victorious. I said after three days, he came back victorious. And a new era started. A new calendar started. Hallelujah. Even those who do not believe in Jesus, they're following a new calendar that started with Jesus. No more sacrifice or animals, nothing. All the, 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 the sins were removed once for all. Amen. Amen. In the past, the animals that were killed were giving a temporary release. Sins were just covered for one year. Just covered. They were not re even removed. Just covered. But with Jesus, sins were removed and forgiven and forgotten and done not to be remembered anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Not to be remembered. In that hell, any disease you struggle with was defeated. Amen. Amen. Any disease, any issue, that was the battle. Jesus was battling against cancer, against autism, against all the, the sickness that we, we know that are driving us crazy. And Jesus was battling with them and defeated them and came out, out of there victoriously after three days. Yes. Revelations chapter 1 verse 18 says, I am the living one. I was dead, but now I'm alive. Forever and ever. I have authority over death and the world of the dead. Jesus has authority over, Amen. over everything. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Death is the final thing. Amen. Amen. Anyone here, even those who are super rich that we know in the world, if you say you lose your life or you lose your money, they will give you the money. Because life is precious. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Money has no power over death. Right. There is no one, nobody, who has any power over death. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
But Jesus has power over death. Death is something terrible. One day I found myself in a hospital because I had a stomach issue, a flu stomach. And I refused to go to the hospital, even though everything was just coming out. And then my wife said, I have never seen you sick. I should call an ambulance. I said, no, 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 no. For me, ambulance, you're dead. I'm finished. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I refuse. We got to the point where the ambulance came. The people were begging me to go with them. I said, okay, I don't understand. Everything that I had in me is gone. So don't worry. What are you worrying about? My wife said, I have never seen him sick, so you should bring him. I, 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 I went by myself. I was walking. I said, okay, I'm going to walk. So I walked. I went in this thing. I re there is a bed. I refused to go on the bed, and then I sat. I sat somewhere. And then we got to the hospital. I was very weak. I was really, really weak. I don't know what they did. I think I slept a little bit. When I, when I woke up, I was so strong. So I did not even notice that they were doing some stuff on me. I was very strong. I called the lady, I said, okay, I'm out of here. I said, okay, we're gonna wait for the doctor. It's okay, please bring the doctor. I had this light on top of my, my bed. You can't sleep, you can't close your eyes. There is nothing I could do. And before I know, my neighbor, one of the neighbors started making noise. This kind of breathing, even in, in, even in a movie, I never heard. <laughs> huh? I said, where are I? I thought it was like an animal. And then the doctor came and then asked the question to the, to the guy. I, I heard them because there was just a curtain. And then said, okay. If you die again, should we uh, re re resuscitate you? And then the person said, oh, no, don't bother. Yeah, just let me go. Oh my God, I said, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, please, I'm, I'm out of here. I removed the things, I removed everything, I was ready to go. And actually, I, I left. This is the first time in my life I hear someone say, oh, no, don't bother, let me go, let me, what? <laughs> hey, no, I'm going nowhere, nowhere. I still have things to do. You, you are laughing, I would like to see you there. <laughs> hey? I said, oh, that's the reason I did not want to go to the hospital. <laughs> hey? A person is saying, oh, hey, just, yeah, don't bother, let me go, let me, what? I'm out of here, and then I left. Brothers and sisters, only Jesus has authority over death. Only Jesus has authority over disease. In the name of Jesus, blind see immediately. Just in the name of Jesus. The Bible says lepers were healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus and Jesus alone has the key for your restoration. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus and Jesus alone has the key for your healing, yeah. for your future, yeah. for your eternal life. Yeah. Jesus and Jesus alone. Hallelujah. This is provoking my spirit because we deal with things that Jesus has already accomplished, has already finished. Yeah. Like I was saying on Friday, we have people running left and right. As soon as they hear there is this prophet in this city, they run there. Hallelujah. They run left, they run uh, on the right side, just following some people, some gurus. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Because they have the secret of the power of resurrection, whatever it is. Nice. Brothers and sisters, stop taking for granted the people that God put under you. Under you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God established some authorities in the church. Amen. Those people are your spiritual authority. Amen. There is no need to run left 
and run right, ignoring the authority that is in the church. Amen. Your blessing is connected to your local leaders. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is. I hear stories of people. I'm going to Edmonton. There is this guru who is in town. Hallelujah. Those people charge others. You need a personal prayer, $2,000. A general prayer, $500. Really? Really? And I'm here, your pastor. I've been volunteering for more than a year. I go every day to work at 7 a.m. so that I can feed my family, pay my mortgage. And after work, I come, I volunteer every day, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and on Sunday, and you. Jesus. Hallelujah. The means that God has given you to support the ministry, you are running up chasing I don't know who. The prophets. $1,000 personal prayer. He does not know your name. He does not know your life. And after the prayer, he will forget about you, but not about your money. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your blessings are connected to your leaders. Jesus. Your local leaders. Apostle preached on that a lot. We have the keys. Hallelujah. They do not. They don't know you. Unless we invite them here, we hand the keys to them to spiritually have an impact on you. Because God brought you under us. This is very important. You do not know how your leaders by gas are able to go left and right until midnight and on 7 a.m. I'm at work. Fresh. No one knows what happened. You're looking for what? An apostle? We have one here. Yeah. 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 Oh, prophet so and so is in re We have two here. Yeah. We have two here. How do you support the ministry? How do you support the, the international ministry? Come on. God did not give us a small call. God gave us a large call. That's the reason we have 20 churches in 13 years. Amen. How do you support that? How do you show your support? By running behind people coming from we don't know where? And when you come back spiritually, you messed up. <laughs> messed up. They have done a great job over there. Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry to talk about those things. They are very important. Either we're moving forward or we are not. Hallelujah. It's not everyone who says, Jesus, Jesus, who has been sent by him. Be very careful. Don't skip people. Don't skip your leaders. Hallelujah. And you run behind performers. They spend their entire time practicing with the money you're feeding them. they practicing. It becomes like a, like a joke. And you pray, you have a good heart. You know, I understand you. You have a good like. But, but spiritually, you do not believe that Jesus died for you. You think Jesus died for them, and then they have the power. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Bible says, the power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. Yeah. That same power is in you. Whatever that person has, you have it in you. You haven't tapped in. You do not believe anything about it. That's the reason you run after people left and right. If God has not put that person as your leader, spiritual leader, you will not receive anything from them. Hallelujah. It's like the blood of a God that will just cover. Eh? You're going left and right just to get the painkiller the effect will disappear after a certain time. Hallelujah. Amen. Evangelists, we have two in the church. Amen. Pastors, 
We have many in the church. Some are not even ordained in the church yet. They came here as a pastor from other places. God sent them here. Because this is not a small ministry. This is a big ministry. Yes. Uh, what did resurrection do? Amen. Amen. First of all, resurrection connected. It's very I'm sorry. It is important that you, you become fully aware of the power of the resurrection. Amen. Jesus could have never died, transferred the power to you, and you're running after people. But you have the same power. Hallelujah. You have the same power in you. That blood of Jesus, you can plead the blood of Jesus over the people around you and make impact. Amen. Hallelujah. So the resurrection connected a sinless God with a sinful man. Us who were sinful. There was a huge curtain, very thick. That was, there was a separation between the presence of God and us. No one beside the high priest was able to go in there. And if, even if he was able to go there, he was not sure he would come back. Hallelujah. But the resurrection took care of that. There is no curtain anymore. We have access to God directly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God was not accessible. God was inaccessible. Hallelujah. But now he lives in us. Yes. He lives in me. Amen. He lives in you too. He lives in you. God lives in you. Oh, the veil. Let's read about the veil. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Says, 51 as well. At the same exact time when Jesus died, the veil was torn in two from top to bottom. Hallelujah. No one touched the veil. Okay, this is something really thick. Amen? It's not something you can even move. Because of the death of Jesus, at the same time that he died, that thing was torn apart. Amen? But what is the spiritual significance of that? There is no separation anymore between the presence of God and us. Yes. There is none. I can be in the presence of God any time I want. Amen. I do not need a high priest. I do not need a guru coming from nowhere. I don't need all of those people. Amen. The presence of God is in here. Amen. The Bible says where two or three gather together, I am in the middle of them. Brothers and sisters, welcome the presence of God today. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God is here today. God is here today. That veil that opened up to open the way to us means that his sacrifice, his sharing of his own blood was the atonement for our sins. That is our atonement. That is our, our remission of our sins. But that was done once for all. Hallelujah. It, now, it's not only a chosen, a group of chosen people. Hallelujah. Now, everyone has access. Yeah. It's open for you, for me, for everyone. Jews, Gentile, everyone. Hallelujah. Yeah. The resurrection gave us access to God. The resurrection gave us access to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I prophesy this morning. I feel you guys are, are kind of cold. Today is a, a crucial day for Christian. Amen. Hallelujah. So I prophesy this morning, by his resurrection, your access to God has been released. Amen. Released. Amen. Released. Amen. The resurrection eradicated limitations. There is no limitations. The resurrection removed the limitations, removed restrictions. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Someone said, we are small gods. Yes, we are. I told you in the morning when we started, we were dangerous. You are dangerous. Hallelujah. I know some of us, your life is like kind of stagnating. You, you feel you are not advancing. You know, others are moving forward. You are not moving forward. At your age, others are married. You are not married. At your age, others have kids. You, are not, you don't have kids. At your age, others have already their first house. You even have no job, no stable job. You are like in a limbo. You don't know where you are. Hallelujah. But I declare this morning, full access to the blessing of God. Full access. Full access. Full access in the name of God. Full access. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Do not be intimidated by the enemy. We, we listen too much to the enemy. We look at others, oh, you maybe have the same thing. My grandma was very old. She was about 100 years and some when she died. My family will live longer. So you will see me for a long time. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I, 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 I can see someone happy. But <laughs> I have a grandma. She just celebrated 100 years. She rides a motorcycle. <laughs> and this is not a joke. Hallelujah. And then when one grandma was sick, the other one was sick too. And then she was asking the other, what kind of uh, medication are you taking? Oh, these ones are really, really good. And then she will take them too. So we spoke to the doctors, so they give them medication that looks like a medication, but there is, there is nothing in it. <laughs> they were really happy. I want the same thing that they prescribed the other grandma over there. Well, we go there and then we bring her. There is nothing in it. She will take it and say, oh, thank God, I am healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes the enemy will tell you stuff uh, and you believe that. It is, the problem is you. Hallelujah. The apostle told us the example of an elephant. An elephant is not something like a dog, domestic, and it's not a domestic animal. Hallelujah. It's a very, very dangerous animal. And some people are smart. They will capture the elephant. It will be a battle for, for a few weeks, a few months. They will tie the, the elephant on a huge tree with chains. And the, the elephant will try to break the chains and break free. free. And after a certain period, the elephant will come to the conclusion, it's not working. I am stuck here. And the elephant will stop defending. The elephant will do whatever they wanted to do. Amen? Amen. And that's the time that the guy will come, remove all the chains, and take just a small rope that even a small kid can break and then put the rope around the elephant. The elephant will never move. As soon as the elephant feels there is a resistance, the elephant stays there. It is all here. It is all what you believe in. Jesus died for you, for you to be free. You are free. That same power, the Bible says, is in us. We just have to proclaim it, to tap into it, to take possession of it, to use it. But we don't. Because we listen to whatever that is going around. We look like this elephant that is very strong. But it will be restricted in the movement by a small rope. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 24. When Jesus died... The veil was torn, and God moved out of that place never again to dwell in a temple made by hands. The veil was torn apart. What I'm trying to say, I'm saying that the chains were broken. 
No more restrictions, no more limitations. Because the Bible says, whom the Son set free is free indeed. You are free. I am free as well. Hallelujah. May you tap today in the power of resurrection. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Resurrection power should change us. Should transform us. Because between you and me, I don't believe hell was created for us. No, I don't think that. It was created for the devil and all the fallen angels. But what I have noticed, many people want to just go to hell. Many people want to go to hell. So God needs to make room, more room, you know, to do some um, uh, enlargement, to, to make room, because people want to go there. You, no matter how you preach, no matter how you tell people what to do, they, they keep doing certain things that will lead them straight to hell. As I said before, if you catch hell here, you will go to hell there unless you meet Jesus. Unless you meet Jesus. Because with Jesus comes with the power of resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. One man in the Bible called Saul caught hell here. But he avoided to go to hell there. Because he met Jesus and he tapped into the power of resurrection. That is the secret. Saul later became Paul. This is a person like you and me, did not see Jesus, did not grow up seeing Jesus, had no clue about anything. Amen? But we owe him half of the Bible. Hallelujah! Paul was dedicated to persecuting all the disciples of Jesus, killing them. Oh, he killed them a lot in the area of Jerusalem. Saul was very good in the bad thing he was doing. He was good doing the bad things. He wanted to destroy everyone. He wanted to destroy the people of God. He wanted to destroy the disciples of, of Jesus. He wanted to destroy the followers of Jesus. Everyone. By the time Paul was a sinner, when he was Saul, he, was, he had the jealousy of Saul. I'm talking about Paul today. He had the jealousy of Saul. He was wicked like King Ahab. He was cruel like Jezebel. His heart was hard like Pharaoh's when he did not know Jesus yet. But when he met Jesus, when he tapped into the power of resurrection, God changed him. You cannot remain the same when you encounter Jesus. Amen. Impossible. You will say, I was, but now I am. Amen. That's the power of resurrection. When he encountered Jesus, he tapped, he tapped into the power of resurrection. He changed. Now he had the faith like Abraham. He was very patient like Job. He was really, really strong like Samson. He, he developed a heart of repentance like David. And forgiveness of Hosea. And definitely the preaching power of John the Baptist. All of that because of the resurrection power. The same person who was a killer, he changed into someone who was preaching Jesus. Hallelujah. The Paul, before meeting Jesus, after meeting Jesus, he worked for what he worked against. Hallelujah. He worked very, very hard to spread the gospel that he worked very, very hard to wipe out. Are you following me? Yes. This is a message of hope. 
Hallelujah. If you think there is no hope for you, listen carefully. What Paul was and what Paul became. Paul started fighting for what he fought against when he was Saul. The people he hated, he started loving them. Amen. He became on fire for Jesus just because he met and he tapped, tapped into the power of resurrection, resurrection. He became full of the Holy Ghost, even though in the past he was full of demons. Everything is possible. Amen. That's the reason I said before, it's not late, Amen. but be in a hurry. The second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Brothers and sisters, picture yourself 10, 15 years back. Can we say today, the new is here? Hallelujah. The new is here. When I was young, I did not want to talk about that, but let's talk about it. Amen. I had my old brother and my younger brother, so I was in the middle. My, my older brother and my young brother are like saints. I was not. I was crazy. I was a little devil. I was disobedient. Anything crazy you can imagine, I have done it. If in the family there was someone who was doing something wrong, it was me. I did not even respect my grandparents. I mean, I did everything I could. I remember vaguely, even in the classroom, I made my music teacher really crazy. She had an instrument. And then I had the same too. But she did not know. So I would make noise in the classroom and <laughs> she wouldn't know where it was coming from. <laughs> All she knew, that was her instrument. So she would rush to her desk and then she would find her instrument there. And everyone was quiet. We were enjoying. And I was the one doing that. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is really soft. I've done so many others. I don't want to talk about here. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I can say today, the new is here. Amen. The new is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Celebrate the new in you too. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 says, Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Everything else is worthless. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ. Brothers and sisters, to gain Christ, you have to let the garbage go. Uh, you don't have any garbage? You, do you need my help? <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to let the garbage go. Yes. We are attached to so many things are, that are irrelevant and are blocking the blessings of God. Many things we are attached to are worthless. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says it's garbage. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you go sit in the, the garbage bin and have fun there? No. The Bible says it's rubbish. It has no value. I'm not talking about garbage, garbage. I'm talking about positions. I'm talking about needs and wants that we have. All the assets we run after. I want this, I want that. Why do you think people run out of those gurus? It's to have things. But the Bible is saying, it's garbage. So you are going to buy garbage. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, we're very quiet. But that's, that's the truth. 
in order to gain Christ, you have to let go. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to let go. Amen. By the power of resurrection, may I declare this morning that the glory of God is on your side. Amen. I need to hear some smile. I need to see. Amen. The power of resurrection is on your side. Amen. I declare this morning that favor is on your side too. Amen. The healing is on your side. Amen. Not only for yourself, but for your family members, your dad, your mom, all the people are, uh, are suffering. Favor for you. Healing and grace. Hallelujah. Amen. The word says, what I bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Amen. What I loosen here will be loosened there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This means you can take authority Amen. over the disease, over everything that is bugging you. No more medication in the morning for you to function. Amen. You can take. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Amen. So you, you don't take any medication. Okay. No one takes a medication here. <laughs> but your parents do. Some other people that I know they do. And before you know, you are going to. Hallelujah. So learn to equip yourself with I only because of lack of knowledge. If you have the knowledge, if you are aware of the power that is in you, Amen. hallelujah, you can know how to fight. What you bind here will be bound in heaven. What you decide to loosen here will be loosened in, the, in heaven too. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May I this morning use my authority to bind some stuff that are bugging you, Amen. that are bugging your parents. Hallelujah. I bind what is tormenting you in the name of Jesus. I bind what is stopping you to move forward. You do one step ahead and three steps back. You find yourself doing the same thing. You're going nowhere. I bound that in the name of Jesus. I, I collect everything that is bugging you. All the, the disease that are bugging you. Cancer and everything that you have. I put them together. Hallelujah. Amen. And I throw them in the wilderness. Amen. In the wilderness. Amen. Not for a year. For eternity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. To never come back. Never come back. Amen. I command a complete release over your health. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are probably not sick. But you have a parent that is sick. The person beside you may be struggling, but you have no idea. Jesus. You have no clue, you have no idea. Maybe in two or three days it will be your turn, but you do not know. Hallelujah. This morning, I command a complete release, a complete deliverance, complete healing, complete and total protection. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This morning, I declare prosperity. Supernatural financial achievements. Amen. You were able to achieve this one. Amen. Hallelujah. But because of the power of resurrection, you will achieve this much. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. Yes. Over you. Over the entire congregation. All the members of the blood of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. On Passover, Amen. on the day of Passover, God instructed the children of Israel. He just said one thing. Take an animal, sacrifice the animal, take the blood, put on your doorpost. When the spirit of death comes, he will just look at the door. When he sees the blood, he will pass over. Yes. Hallelujah. He will pass over. The spirit of death did not knock at any door just to check who was in. If you sinned yesterday or not. If you paid your tithe or not. If you, you go to church or not. No, 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 no. It was just the blood that was covering. The blood will make the difference. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. Over all your assets. Over all your kids. I declare invalid null and void any curse any decree 
that the enemy Amen. has declared over you, over your life, over the life of your children and your grandchildren and the generations to come. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. They are covered in the name of Jesus. Covered. I remove the veil that used to stop you to advance. The veil that stop your family to advance. The veil that stop you to have a normal life. The veil that stop you to have a fiancé, a husband, a job, a kids. I remove the veil by the power of resurrection. Hallelujah. I remove that veil that is blocking you to advance, to prosper. Hallelujah. You work, you earn money, but you have nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some have two, three jobs. They are in debt still. I remove that veil that is blocking you to access. Hallelujah. May the blood of Jesus cover you completely and totally, not only today, but tomorrow. Not only yourself, but your children. Hallelujah. Our children are in danger. Brothers and sisters, your children are in danger. How many parents are here and all the children are here? How many? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But many of the children are here. Because this is not fun for them. Hallelujah. The veil is still there for them. The veil is still blocking them to access the presence of God. To access the, the blessings of God. I remove that veil. Hallelujah. I remove it in the name of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus over you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, dear Lord, I thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the power of resurrection. You have demonstrated such love for us, Lord. You have shown that there is nothing you cannot do for us, Lord. You will go always an extra mile for us. Even in the shadow of the death, Lord, you will be there with us. You will be a lamp on our feet so we know where we're going. Hallelujah. This morning, Lord, I pray that this veil that is blocking us to access our blessing be gone in the name of Jesus. Not to come back anymore. Oh, thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood that covers us today, tomorrow, and after tomorrow. I plead the blood over you, over your family, over your job, and over your dreams. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the power of the resurrection bring your dreams to life one more time again. Your, all your dreams to life. Hallelujah. What you have dreamed for yourself and for your children, they will come alive because of the power of the resurrection. Jesus did not die for nothing. Jesus not, did not die in vain. If we cannot succeed, if victory cannot be on our side, it means that Jesus died in vain. And that is not possible. Let everyone in this congregation have a testimony. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Amen. Yesterday I was crying because I could not get married. One came and he left. Another came and he left. I know I'm beautiful. I know that. But I don't know what happened. Hallelujah. I remove that veil in the name of Jesus. I remove and I bring the grace of God. The grace of God. Can someone tap into that? The veil is gone in the name of Jesus. It is gone. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus covers you. The enemy will not, will not see you anymore. All the drugs and the alcohol and all the problems that the enemy is throwing at your kids. I stop them by the blood of Jesus. They will pass over. Disease will come, will pass over. Hallelujah. I secure your job by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you will prosper. You will not be able to do two, three, four, five jobs to be able to, to live. That is gone in the name of Jesus. You will enjoy your job. You will prosper in the name of Jesus. If you receive to, today, put your hands together. Ah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Because he lives, I live as well. Because he lives eternally, I will live eternally as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I love you very much. Amen. After the service, thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To God, all the honors. Hallelujah. Do not be in a hurry to go home. Amen. We have some, some food. We have some refreshments. We want to celebrate our own way. But before that, let's celebrate with another worship. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. 